I just been training, getting ready for this fight. You know how that go. Yeah, I hear that, man. So tell us, man, how did it feel to win the USA National Championship in 2013 and win the youth national championship? Well, I mean, it wasn't no special feeling to me because I, I knew I was gonna win. You know, like when you train hard for something and you dedicate your time to it, you know, you get the results you put in for it. I put in all the work and I crossed all my T's and dotted all my I's and I got what I was looking to get. Okay, so when did, it, when did you recognize that boxing was for you? When did you finally say, figure out, like, you know, boxing is my niche? When I found it. Oh, yeah. Because I, I always had a passion for uh, fighting before, long before boxing. So it was like, shit, nigga, I can box and potentially make millions and not get in trouble for it? Sign me up. That's, I ain't got to go to school for it? Sign me up. Speaking of school, I see that you went to Farmville University of High School. How was that? How was going to school and doing boxing? And how did you balance that? And I went to University High School. It's in Farmville. Uh, so it was a college preparatory school. I just went to school. <laughs> I did what I could. And, you know, I was a smart kid, though. So yeah. I ain't pay attention much. But I uh, got all my work done for the most part. But I got my work done so fast that I can get my work done, then go play in the halls, skip, whatever, do whatever I want to do. Mac the you know. Yeah, all that. So for yeah. me, it, was, it wasn't it was really hard to do. It's just like, fuck, I got to be in school and I don't want to be here. Man, that's what's up, man. So tell us how it feels being a WBO international champion in Florida. Uh, it was a big accomplishment for me, but you know, like I said, that shit wasn't really nothing to me because I, it's some shit that I trained for. I believed I was gonna get. I know I'm gonna get a war title. You know, uh, my belt, big sister. So, shit, it's more to come. You know what I'm saying? Right. I remember the first time I ever seen you box. It was in 2011. It was at the, uh, I think it was at the, quote me if I'm wrong. It was at the Junior Olympics when you fought Hector Valdez. They told me I was gonna lose that fight too. I got my gloves. When I went to go get my gloves, they told me, oh, you got your hands full. And I said, man, give me money to this shit. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Yeah. That was crazy, man. So going into that fight, man, I know you, it, I seen the fight. I, th I knew for sure you could have could have stopped. You almost stopped. Yeah. Like, we got three rounds, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's so, you know, you got to hurry up and get your punches off, man. But I want to talk about this great fight you have September 24th at the Broken Arrow in Oklahoma. What's up? I want to talk about this dude who's saying, Saul, is it Saul Sanchez, right? Yeah. I see he ranked number 14. He ranked number 14 in the WBO, and he ranked number 9 in the WBA. So you moving up for this fight, correct? Yeah, moving up in weight. How do you how do you feel about this fight? Do you feel like this, this, this is a... Every fight is a must-win fight, but do you think this one really will put you on the map? Closer to just that just do fight, that title fight. Of course. Right. Because it's on it's on uh Showbox main event and uh he's ranked in WBC and WBA it is. Uh shoot. I've been coming off of what, two years inactive. So it's a it's a big fight for me, you know what I'm saying? It ain't no added pressure, nothing like that though. I mean this is another day in the fucking gym to me. Right. So tell us what's He's just somebody in the way. Right. Yeah. So tell us what's the difference between the two? What's the difference between Jerico O'Quinn and the Great Lakes King O'Quinn? Tell us what's the difference between the two. 
it ain't really no difference. It ain't really no difference, you know? But they both got, see, they both got a mean side. They both got a, like, right now I'm coming to you, calm, cool, and collective, mm -hmm. but don't piss neither side off. But the Great Lakes King, he a straight killer. He a straight killer. So why the Great Lakes King? Why did you give your, why did, why did you chose that name for, for a nickname to enter the ring or just overall? Cause this was, cause I started in, uh, in off in the amateurs mm -hmm. and this was my region. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the Great Lakes region. So I'm the king of this region, I feel like. Ain't nobody fuck with me in this region. And I just took that shit and ran with it. I, but I, but I, that was my, I had, that had, that was my Facebook name way before uh, before I started boxing, though. That's cool. The one, the one thing I do, because I know we don't see each other as much and we don't talk, but the one thing I like about you is you take this serious. You don't play a course. You mean business. So that's one thing I do like about you. You, you, got the, you got the attitude for boxing overall. Like, I just like it overall. And that's why I say you're one of my favorite fighters out of Detroit. Detroit Thank you. Here. And I, I just liked it about you. You like, you know, you don't bullshit. You come here and be like, you know what, you know, it is what it is. You ain't, you ain't all. I ain't here to make no friends. Right. I ain't here to hang around. This business is nothing personal. It's business. It's, right. it's, it's, you gonna get your ass fucked up. You get in the ring with me. And, <laughs> and that's how it should be, man. And that's one reason. That's one reason I like you. Take it, you take it serious, man. You don't, you don't mess around, man. And that's one thing. I enjoy about watching you train because I see you, you really train hard, man. You run a lot. So how many days and how many hours do you train in and outside of boxing? Right now I'm uh, training about, I, I got my morning workout in. That's about an hour and a half, two hours uh, conditioning and stuff like that. And then um, I come to the gym, I put another like three hours in. Okay. If you don't mind me asking, outside the gym, do you ever meditate? Meditate? Do you you get a time. Do you ever pray? Up? Do you pray a lot? Do you, you know? I pray. Yeah, I pray. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, I consider myself a Christian, and I go to church. Most definitely. Was you, was you born and raised in church? In the, I wasn't born and raised. In, I wasn't born and raised in the church, but mm -hmm. my family are uh, believe in Jesus. Nothing wrong with that, man. But, um, a couple more questions I'd like to ask you. I know this is not your first time fighting on Showtime, but I've seen you fight on Showtime a couple of times. Doing, doing the training camp, what is your favorite thing you like to do in training camp? Like, do you like get on the bag more? Do you like to, sh you know, what's your favorite object you like to do as far as in training camp or the training overall? Uh, shit. I like to spar for real, but I don't spar much. Is it because it's not a. Is I get motherfuckers work, motherfuckers don't want to give me no work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I go to other motherfuckers' gyms, get other motherfuckers' works, but then when it's time for me to get some work, motherfuckers don't give me no work. And then, shit, I don't know. It's just, I don't get work. I, don't, I ain't sparred as much for this camp, but you ain't gonna be able to tell. But I never sparred that much, mm -hmm. never. So all those and amateur tournaments and all that shit I was winning, the USA's Nationals you just mentioned me winning, mm -hmm. I didn't spar for that at all. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't spar for the Lil' Red fight when I fought James Smith and got the title. I didn't spar for that fight. I sparred what, maybe what, twice or once, you know? It's that it's the work you put in and the mental mind you put in. Yeah, and I, and I spar with my cousin who don't even be in the gym. You know what I'm saying? So any work is it, it's all like you said. It's all about the yeah. Sparring. You was able to out, you know outsmart your way. It's like a chess match. You, you all I gotta do is be in shape. I don't give a fuck about none of none else. If I'm in shape, you in trouble. Oh yeah, best believe that. So what? I'm not gonna ask it because I. If you had anything you could change about Detroit boxing, because you know we're here in Detroit, what would it be? My fuckers hate a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, I don't feel like everybody, it's everybody for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you look at people in Philly and in the D.C. area and stuff like that, it ain't like that. They all one each one. Uh, each one teach one, and everybody putting everybody on. You know what I'm saying? Like you got Danny Garcia, he set up to put Stephen Fulton, Stephen Fulton leading, drawing in his own. Right, they all keeping each other close and bringing each other up. Gilly the Kid, they all supportive and using their platform to show others. You know what I'm saying? Talent. They ain't stingy with it. They ain't. They ain't want all the shine under that. So. 
the ones who getting they shine from Philly, like J Rock and all them, they all show love to all the other box Philly boxers that's coming up. Yeah, I agree. And by you knowing that, sometimes is it harder for you to trust a lot of people? Just overall, period. I don't trust motherfuckers, anyways. Mm -hmm. So. Right, but I'm saying when you do trust and you, you like you build friendship, you gotta really own it. You know, really, really, you know, I, gravitate to it. I ain't really into building friendships mm -hmm. because it takes a long time to build. Yeah, I and I take that shit, I take that shit deeper than everybody else take it. You feel me? When I look at you as a real friend, I look at you as family. Right. So, and if you do some shit, some foul shit, mm -hmm. you ain't gonna take it to where I'm gonna take it to. So yeah. I'd rather not even get it that far established where you, you think like, where you feel like we good mm -hmm. or everybody else feel like we good because if it go there and it go south, yeah, it's gonna go. you ain't gonna take it where I'm gonna take it. Right. So, so I wanna thank you for sitting down and chiming in with me on this interview, man. I really wanna appreciate that. Cause oh no, I, anytime. Because I know a lot of people, a lot of people don't know me. You know what I'm saying? They, they think, you know, perception of me, which I really don't care. But at the same Welcome. time, I know like I keep it real. You know what I'm saying? And I, I like to talk to everybody about, about boxing. Uh -huh. Boxing, just even the even other more stuff. So, but I, I like to, I, like I said, you one of my favorite fighters from here, man. And Don't just be saying that now. No, no, seriously. I mean, you can just be able to tell, you know. Don't I, tell every other fighter the same thing now. No, I haven't. If you watch my interview. Because I'm going cause I'm to come back and I'm going I'm to I'm check you about it. Like, nigga, you said this shit about them and me. Oh, and please, I, please. How many favorites please, you got? Uh, it's you, Marlon. Do you mind me saying it? Go ahead. You, Marlon Harrison. That's Harrington, my guy. Sat oh, that's my guy. Um, you are Rodell Booker. I like Rodell. I like Rodell too. Uh, it ain't too many. Because I don't read to Tony. Tony Harrison. That's my guy. My boy Antonio Way. I like Antonio. Nice. Um, it's, it's not that many, man. They cool. But, you know, I, 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 uh, Gordy Rush. I like Gordy. <laughs> Gordy, he nice. He's coming like along. Gordy. Developing uh, good. One of my guys, he's not a pro, but yeah, Ferris Dixon. I like Ferris. He's going to be a problem. Lil KK, I like Lil KK. Lil KK gonna be a problem as you get older. Mm -hmm. I like uh, the little the dude named Lil Makai Barber. I like him. I don't uh, know. Yeah, you know, I know you don't, but uh, who else? It's it's a lot of boxes, man. I can't name it, top. I can't name them all, but like y'all, I like watching you guys, man. For real, straight up. Yeah. I like watching you guys, man. But like Appreciate said, it. For anybody that's out there watching this podcast. How can they reach out to Jerico Queen? I'm on Instagram at G R E A T L A K E S underscore King. I'm on Facebook at Great Lakes Apostrophe King. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all I'm really on for real. I'm on Twitter at Great Lakes King too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all. Make sure y'all tune into his fight, man, on Showtime, man. The next Showbox Generation, man. September 24th. September 24th. It go down in here, but it's definitely going down in the building. That's real. going down. My man, I'm telling you, he's real, man. He's a real cat, man. This is what he just said a minute ago. He's real, man. I mean, straight real. And the rest of the guys, especially Marlon Harrington, I see you fighting on the car too. Tutors both of you guys. Oh, yeah, he is on. Which for sure, man. Thank y'all for putting on the seating. I will be watching. This is the Press for Conversation Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Layback Corey, y'all. Peace. What's up, man? This is Jericho, the Great Lakes King. Shout out to my sponsors, the Lobster Food Truck. Make sure you hit them up and get you something to eat. From 12 to 6, that's Tuesday through Saturday. Shout out to Rival Boxing. Shout out to Team Buck and Scotty. Shout out to Arte Del Quinn for making my outfit for me. That's going to have me fresh, fly, and flashy. September 24th on Showtime, main event. Wow.